What's going on everyone? So welcome to my latest video. This is my latest catch-up video. This time around it is for August of 2023. This is where I talk about all the films, 2023 films specifically, that I saw in the month of August. I'll be talking about them very, very briefly and then giving you guys my rating. If you guys want my full in-depth thoughts on these movies, you guys can check out my reviews on Letterboxd where I do go further in depth. Uh, Letterbox link will be down below. And guys, enough exposition. Let's get started. So kicking things off, the beginning of August, I saw Strays, and it was actually an early screening. I saw it a couple weeks early. There wasn't any critic reviews or audience ratings or anything, nothing. So I went into it as blind as possible um, and only knowing the premise. And I got to say, this movie was quite disappointing. I do have my full review for this on my YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, I was just disappointed by this movie. I think that given the premise, it should have taken advantage of an intriguing premise, but it just felt very lackluster. The humor was very hit or miss, uh, mostly miss, and the filmmaking itself I really didn't like. A lot of the CGI is just terrible, really, really terrible. I was surprised, especially like the fire, and there's a scene involving a hawk, really, really bad. Uh, overall, it's a very disappointing movie. I can see why some might like it, but as a dog owner, I thought that I would love it and that I would get to really appreciate a lot of the humor, but alas, I found myself very cold toward this movie, not a fan of it, and uh. Yeah, that's why for me, Strays, I personally will be giving a... And next up we have The Beasts. So this is a film I knew absolutely nothing about going into it. And I gotta say, that's the best way to experience this film. Because despite it being almost two and a half hours long, you can't help but get caught up in this slow burn drama. It is really, really well done. Again, going to it as blind as possible. It's to think Place Beyond the Pines or Waves in terms of those type of films that you want to go into it as blind as possible and you're in for a really special experience. That's all I'm really going to say because I don't want to oversell it, but I also don't want to undersell it. Just experience it for yourself. If it comes on a streaming site and you see the film The Beast, just know Chad Saborin says, hey, watch this film because it is 100% worth your time. That's why for me, The Beast, it's one of my favorite films of the year so far. That's why I'll personally be giving it a. And next up we have Sisu. So I got the Blu-ray out from the library. I borrowed it for free. And that wasn't originally the goal. Originally I was going to watch this film in theaters. But I got to say after watching it at home, I'm glad that I did wait because this movie is pretty middle of the road. Um, which I didn't think I was going to say because I heard that the film was very heavy on visual storytelling. And it is, but at the same time, it's just, it's not intriguing. It feels like it's doing the very bare bones uh, on what it could do. I feel like if there was a stronger director and I feel like stronger action, this would have been like the Mad Max Fury Road of this year. But unfortunately, it just felt very uh, middle of the road. It's not a bad movie, but it's also not a good movie. I think that it has sprinkles of moments, but overall... It's a pretty forgettable movie, and given the premise, given the actual uh, choice of being very heavy on visual storytelling, that shouldn't be the case. But here we are. Sisu, I personally think it's middle of the road. That's why I'll be giving it a... And next up, another movie that I waited to borrow from my local library on Blu-ray, and we have... Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. So similar to Sisu, I was planning to see this in the years, but just got caught up with other things, and here we are. Um, I'm kind of glad I waited for this, though, because it's it's a movie that I could see really hitting home for a lot of individuals, especially uh, pre-teens and teens, because it is delving into a lot of those issues in terms of a coming-of-age um, you know, middle school story. But here's the thing. I think that overall, as a whole, there are sprinkles of good moments, especially towards the end when, no spoilers, but you see one side of a family and another side of a family interact. And I think that whole part was excellent. Really, really strong stuff. But the rest of the movie just felt fine. It felt very okay. Again, I can see some people really, really loving this film. I can. I can 100% see that. And I get that. But for me... I just thought it was okay, and that's why for me, Are You There, Goddess Me, Margaret, I personally would be giving a... Next up, we have Birth slash 
Rebirth. This was a movie that, similar to The Beast, I didn't really know anything about it going into it, other than that it was like an indie horror film. And similar to The Beast, go into it as blind as possible, because there are things that happen specifically in the first act that if you go into it knowing nothing, you will be surprised with what happens as things are slowly unveiled. And that's something I was happy about, because I felt like I was on a journey with these characters, and it really, really was something that I'll never forget in terms of an experience. It's very... It's very hard to watch certain scenes, um, especially as someone that, you know, in terms of body horror, sometimes it does affect me. This film definitely did. I can see other people saying, no, it's, it's tame. But for me, there were certain sequences that when you blend body horror with medical stuff, it can have an effect on me. And it did. I definitely had an effect on this film. And I, I really like it. I think it's a good film. I definitely think that it's going to be under a lot of people's radars. I mean, it was only at my local theater for like not even a week. So... I do think that it's unfortunately going to be under the rug for a lot of people. But please, check out Birth Rebirth, especially if you like indie horror. And for me, I personally will be giving a... And next up, we have Sanctuary, which is the latest neon movie. Here's the thing. Sanctuary, I wanted to see in theaters, but... I think when the first week it came out, I just I had other stuff that was going on in my life, if I'm not mistaken. So I just said, you know what, I'll watch it the following week. And I don't even think it made it into my local theater uh, a second week. So I was like, you know what, screw it. I'll just wait until it comes at my local library. And when I was trying to put a hold on it, I was like, oh, the library only has the DVD? That's odd. But then I looked it up and Neon is doing this thing now where they're just releasing the DVD of certain movies. They did that with uh, How to Blow Up a Pipeline, which is absurd because that movie is fantastic. And I think it should be at the very least on Blu-ray. But here we are. I would say Sanctuary. I kind of am glad that I waited because I think that it's very well acted. In fact, the acting is the one thing I will say that is by all means... The one thing that if someone were to ask me what's something that I liked about Sanctuary, that's the one thing I'll be able to say, yes, I will remember that. It was great, great acting. I loved the chemistry. Uh, they have very palpable chemistry, and they really do a good job with the dialogue. But unfortunately for the movie itself, everything else just feels very exhausting. I wasn't a big fan of the the you know story, and it, it felt very repetitive, I felt at least. Um and I feel like if you're on this movie's wavelength, you're not going to feel that way. And I totally, totally respect that. But for me, it just felt like it was something that could have been like a half hour, like a short film. But because it was 90 minutes or so, it just felt exhausting after a while. And not in like a, you know, this is how you're supposed to feel type way. It's more of like a, okay, I get it. You're not sure which is real and which is not. I get it. I get it. And that's something I usually like. I usually like that. But here, I just wasn't a big fan of the execution. Um, so for me, I felt middle of the road on Sanctuary. Again, I can see why some people might love it. But for me, Sanctuary, I personally will be giving a... And next up, we have Puppy Love, which I read the premise about because um, I think I saw like a picture of the poster and... Um, I read the premise and I was like, you know what, as a dog owner, I'm going to check out this movie. And then the cherry on top is that it stars Lucy Hale, who I think is a good actress. I just think that she gets um, terrible roles a lot of the time, unfortunately. And I think that that streak, unfortunately, continues because I, I like her performance. I do in this movie. But the movie itself is very disappointing. I think that when you have a premise like this, there's so much potential. But this movie does every single romantic cliche that you can think of. If, you, if you're thinking about it, that, like a romantic comedy cliche right now, I guarantee you that romantic comedy cliche is in this movie. It's a shame too, because I feel like, again, I know I'm a broken record, but the premise, man, the premise is something that I think could have and should have worked. But it is a movie that if you are fine with a very cliche-ridden story, plot, character development, all that, you'll probably like this movie. But for me, I was disappointed by those aspects. I also wasn't a big fan of the filmmaking because it was very hit or miss. Um, and overall, Puppy Love, I was kind of disappointed. And that's why I'll personally be giving it a... Next up, we have Retribution, which I saw in theaters. And uh, this is the latest Liam Neeson action movie, except this time he's pretty much in a car for the entire duration of the movie. And... Uh, 
the first half I was able to say, yeah, it's it's throwaway entertainment. It's it's fine, whatever. It's kind of middle of the road. But the second half is when I actually was like, oh my goodness, this movie, this movie got, you know, dumbed down real fast. Especially the ending. The ending might be one of the worst I've seen of the year. The movie itself is, eh, it's whatever. But that ending, man, holy cow, it is so so bad. Um, I have my issues with this movie. I do can see some audience members liking it. I definitely can. But for me, I just did not like this. I really didn't. And um, yeah, for me, Retribution, I personally will be giving a... And next up, we have The Equalizer 3. So The Equalizer, the first one, I really like. I actually own it on Blu-ray. The second one, I wasn't a big fan of it. I thought it was pretty standard issue. And the third one, I also went into it pretty much expecting it to be standard issue as well. Um, but the thing is this. What's frustrating about The Equalizer 3 is that there are moments that are genuinely good. Like, I love the opening scene. The opening scene just felt very, very interesting. Like, you, you feel as though you're on this journey where the filmmaker is grabbing you and saying, you need to pay attention. Like, this is... You know, there's going to be some, you know, a lot of a lot of things that we're delving into. And unfortunately, the movie has progressed. They got less and less interesting. I would say the third act, especially, it was just like very rushed and just something where it was like, really, this is happening. OK, this is OK, whatever. But um, I wasn't overall a huge fan of the Equalizer 3, but I did like it better than the second. And I do think that if you're a fan of the second one, that I definitely would recommend the third one, because I do think the third one is slightly better. But overall, I do think it was kind of a whimper um, in terms of how to end this trilogy. But by no means not by no means not a bad movie. And I will say it does have its entertainment value, and it does have some things that I did like, such as you know some of the cinematography, Denzel Washington's performance, Denzel Washington's chemistry with uh, Dakota Fanning. But overall, it's pretty middle of the road, and that's why for me, I personally would be giving the Equalizer three a. And last but not least, we have Bottoms. So Bottoms is the follow-up film from the director who did Shiva Baby. And I really liked Shiva Baby. In fact, that was one of my favorite films when it came out. I loved Shiva Baby. I thought it was a great, great depiction on social anxiety going to gatherings. Really good job. Uh, so Bottoms, of course, I was excited for, especially when I read the premise. The premise just immediately struck me as this could be quite good. And you know what? The film, the first 10, 15 minutes, I was worried that it might not be. But after the first 10, 15 minutes when I was able to find its groove, I really liked this film. I thought it was quite, quite good. Um, what I especially liked was not only just the chemistry between the two leads, but how this is a comedy that has so much emphasis on style. Like the, the director's style can be felt. While you're watching this film, you can tell that this is made by someone that actually cares about what they're creating. And I love that because so many times I watch comedies and the filmmaking is just very eh. Here, I loved the score, loved the cinematography, loved, loved, loved the details of the production design. There's just a lot of care that was put into this movie. You can't help but really fall in love with these characters. Every single character is great. Every single performance is great. Again, just an overall well-crafted high school uh, comedy. And yeah, for me personally, Bottoms, I liked it. And that's why I'll be giving it a... But yeah, guys, those are the um, August 2023 movies that I saw that are, again, 2023 films. Let me know which films you saw in August um, in the comment section down below. And guys, as always, I really do appreciate you guys watching with the subscription, notification bell, follow me down the letterbox, and I will get you guys later.